Hello children, a warm welcome to all of you on this online platform of Sri Gogulam Public School Guruayur. Children, we were discussing the chapter 8, Controlling. In our last class, we have discussed the concept and importance of controlling. Today, we will discuss about the steps in process of control or controlling. So, there are five steps involved in the process of controlling. Controlling is a systematic process and it involves, as I told you, five steps. The first one is setting performance standards. Second one is measurement of actual performance. Third point is comparing actual performance with standards. Fourth point is analyzing deviation and the fifth point is taking corrective action. Let us have a brief discussion on each of these steps. First step is setting performance standards. As you know children that in an organization some activities take place. Those activities lead the organization in attainment of their goal. So, while performing those activities, a standards of performance are set. And this standard of performance are the criteria against which actual performance will be measured. Standards should be flexible enough to be modified whenever required. So, the standard set should be such a way that it should be flexible according to the requirements. Due to changes taking place in internal and external business environment, standards may have to be revised. So, sometimes the standard may, be, may have to be revised as you know that business environment is very complex, very dynamic. So, as per the changes happening in the internal and external environment, we also have to revise our standard set. So, we can say that standards should be very flexible enough. Next point is standard can be set in both quantitative as well as in qualitative terms. At the time of setting standard, a manager should try to set standard in precise quantitative terms. Why quantitative terms? Because it will be helpful for comparison of our performance much easier. So, we can compare our com uh, performance. For that purpose, it is better that manager go for a quantitative terms. So, these are the points which you have to take in a consideration while setting performance standard. Next step of controlling is measurement of actual performance. So, in first step we have set a standard for the performance and now once we start our activity, we have to measure our actual performance, how we are doing. So, measurement of actual performance should be done in an objective and reliable manner. There are several techniques for measurance, measurement of performance. They are personal observation, sample checking, performance reports, accounting ratios. So, all these techniques can be used for measuring the actual performance. Next point is, Performance should be measured in the same units in which the standards are set to make their comparison easier. So, in first step we have set some standard for a performance. So, in which unit we have set the standard for performance in the same unit you have to measure the actual performance. So, doing that will help us for a easier comparison. It is generally believed that measurement should be done after the task is completed. However, wherever possible, measurement should be done continuously during performance. 
so uh, sometimes we have to uh, it is not possible to uh, make a comparison in between the task so uh, we have to wait till the task is completed but it is it will be very be um, uh, convenient or it would be much better if you are uh, going for actual perform measurement of actual performance in between okay in between the task if you are measuring the performance that would be a good one okay so for instance in case of uh, assembling task so you are assembling different parts of the uh, machine and each part uh, pro uh, product should be each part product should be checked uh, before assembling so each part which you are going to assemble uh, you can check uh, in between so that after the whole uh, assembling is over uh, after all the assembling is completed it will be difficult for you to check the actual performance of that machine so better in case of assembling task you can check it in between okay now the next uh, third um, uh, steps of comparing um, controlling is comparing actual performance with standards actual performance is compared with standards to find out the deviation if any so in first step we have set the standard in second step we have uh, we are measuring our actual performance third step is we have to compare these two and we have to find out are we deviated from our performance and if we are deviated what we have to do we have to find the solution for that deviation or we have to find the cause for the deviation do you know what is deviation deviation means difference between the actual performance and the standard comparison become easier when standards are set in quanti quantitative terms that we have already discussed here an example is given in front of you the standard output for the week is 100 units for a uh, one week uh, a standard output is 100 units and performance of the worker is 92 units during that week so how much the deviation is it is 8 deviation the uh, workers are short by 8 units so there is a negative deviation that you have to correct okay so in the third step you are comparing the actual performance with the standard this is the standard set for one week 100 unit that is the standard performance of the workers and actual performance of the worker is 92 units third step what we are doing you are comparing these two 100 unit minus 20, 92 units that give you 8 unit so the workers are short by 8 units so there is a deviation we have to find out why that 8 unit have uh, have the or the target of 100 unit have not been achieved why the deviation is that you have to find out so that is the fourth step that is analyzing deviation you have to study that deviation you have to study the cause of that deviation so the deviation from the standards are analyzed to identify their causes while analyzing deviation it is important to determine the acceptable range of deviation so for the management how much deviation is acceptable within that range or uh, that can be accepted that deviation can be accepted that you have to first of all uh, um, determine after deviation also deviation in key area of the business need to be attended more urgently as compared to deviation in certain insignificant area if the deviation is in the not so important area then uh, it's okay but if the deviation is in key area very important area of the business then that have to be attended more urgently there are two techniques available to analyze this deviation and they are critical point control and management by exception 
should be used by the manager in this regard. So these two techniques are used to find out whether the deviation is in important area or not. Whether the deviation is in significant area or insignificant area. For that these two techniques are used and this is very important uh, point which you have to study thoroughly. So children what is the first point? Critical point control. It helps in controlling process by focusing on key result areas. So there are in uh, many key result area in a business. Key result means very important area which give you a good result which are critical to the success of an organization. These areas are very important for the success of the organization. If you uh, that areas are neglected that will hamper the success of the organization that will make the organization in danger. So these areas have to be uh, have to be given more focus. If anything goes wrong at the critical point the entire organization will suffer. So that's why the critical point control or key result area have to be given more focus. If the deviation is in this area then urgent uh, correction have to be taken. The next one is management by exception MBE or it is also known, as, known by control by exception. It is important principles of management control based on the belief that an attempt to control everything result in controlling nothing. So if you are trying to control each and every uh, uh, corners of the organization it is difficult it will be difficult for you so it will it will be like uh, controlling nothing so better you control those area which are more important okay thus only significant deviation which cross the permissi permissible limit should be brought to the notice of the management so here the manager what he is he is supposed to do is only those deviation which is acceptable within the acceptable range uh, that can be um, that can be handled by him uh, that can be handled by that manager himself but if that uh, if the deviation is in uh, those areas or it is uh, going beyond the acceptable limit or permissible limit then that have to be brought to the notice of management and deviation within the acceptable range should be ignored. So within the range can be ignored but if it is uh, going beyond the acceptable range or permissible limit then it have to be brought to the notice of management. For example if the plan lay down 2% increase in labor cost as an acceptable range of deviation in a manufacturing organization only increase in labor cost beyond 2% should be brought to the notice of management so that immediate corrective action can be taken. So what is given in this example is 2% is increase in labor cost is an acceptable range for the organization but if the manager while performing the process of controlling uh, he he um, came to know that that uh, there was an increase in labor cost beyond 2% that should be immediately corrected okay and brought to the notice of management and have to be corrected otherwise if it is uh, uh, below 2 then it will be okay okay so this is the point after identifying the deviations that demand managerial attention these deviations need to be analyzed to identify their cause which may be unrealistic standards, defective process, inadequacy of uh, resources, organizational constraints and environmental factors beyond the control of the organizations. So uh, in, uh, in the previous slide we saw that we have to identify the deviations uh, that demand managerial attentions. So if uh, urgent um, attentions are required then we have to study that deviation and identify 
what are the causes of that deviation that causes may be sometimes uh, the standard which we have set may be unrealistic or the process may there may be some defect in the process a resource may be not educate to complete the task or uh, fulfill our organizational goal objectives and sometimes maybe uh, some environmental factors which is beyond the organizational's control so these all may be the causes that cause you have to find find out a correct cause should be find out the deviations and their causes are then reported and corrective action taken at appropriate level so once the causes are clear then that uh, have to be reported to the management and corrective actions are supposed to be taken next the last step is taking corrective action no corrective action is required when the deviations are within the acceptable range or permissible limit so if it is in within the range uh, of the standard set then uh, we can say that uh, there is no need of any correction when the deviations go beyond the acceptable range especially in the key result areas immediate managerial attention is required so that the deviation do not occur again and the standards are accomplished so uh, when uh, the deviation is beyond the range and especially if it is uh, uh, in the key result area then we have to immediately find out the uh, so, um, dv that is uh, causes and we have to correct it immediately so that we can achieve our objective without much difficulty then in case the deviation cannot be corrected through managerial action the standards may have to be revised so if those deviation are with, uh, not within our control then we have to revise our standard set okay so these are the three possible thing we can do as a corrective action for that deviations okay now it is time to conclude today's class let us have a quick re review of what we have done today we were discussing about the steps or process of controlling the first step is setting performance standard we are setting a standard then after setting a standard we will measure our actual performance and then we will compare our actual performance with the standard set through this comparison we if we are finding any deviation we have to analyze the deviation we have to study the deviation if the de there is no correction required and a deviation is within our permissible limit then we can continue our process okay and if a significant deviation is noticed in a key result area then we have to find out the causes of that deviation and after finding out the causes for that deviation we have to take the corrective action so this is the process or steps which we have to follow uh, in this order itself okay so uh, it is a very important question from the exam point of view hope you have understood the steps of controlling you have to read the text covering this point attend the test paper meet you in the new next class with a new chapter till then goodbye take care